Okay, so this is the process for making agar, and what agar is is we're gonna we're gonna uh, it's it's a solidifier that has nutrients on a plate for uh, the mycelium. So when we do spores or we do liquid culture and we want to grow them out, we want to make sure there's no bacteria. We're gonna grow them out on this substance on agar. It's called a, uh, the the solidifier is agar agar. So the recipe for that to make ten plates of this. So these are these are ninety millimeter plates. To make uh, 10 of the 90 millimeter plates, the recipe is one and a half cups of water, 7.5 grams of agar agar, 7.5 grams of dry malt extract, and 0.75 grams of nutritional yeast. What we'll do is put this on our scale, tear. So this is our agar agar, and this is the solidifier. So this is this is what makes it hard once it's uh, once we pressure cook it and it cools off it's going to harden. So we're looking for 7.5 grams. This doesn't have to be an exact science. 7.5, 7.6, that's fine. Dump that into the jar. Tear that. Now we're going to get some malt extract. And again, this is going to be the same amount as the agar agar, 7.5 grams. Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be exact. grams and now nutritional yeast we're just looking for 0.75 so not even a full gram there we go what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my jar mix it up just a little bit and then I'm gonna add my cup and a half of water. Put my lid on top. I'm gonna to shake up the contents inside here so they go all through the water. And then I'm gonna put this in my pressure cooker with enough water to uh, fill about halfway up. Pressure cooker just came up to pressure little valve just popped open there. So we got 11.02, so we're gonna give it 15 minutes to steam off before we put our rocker on top. So we'll come back at 11.17 and then we'll put the rocker on. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, so we're gonna put our 15 pound knocker on there. Leave the heat on until it comes up to pressure. As soon as this knocker starts to, starts to wiggle back and forth, we're gonna turn the heat down just to stabilize the pressure inside so it's not building more pressure. We just wanna maintain, so we're looking for that 15 PSI. Once we get it to that 15 PSI, we're gonna uh, maintain it there for 45 minutes when we're cooking agar, and then we'll take it off. All right, you can see the knocker is coming to, uh, it's starting to make, make some noise, so it's 15 pounds. I'm just gonna turn this down to about two and a half. And that should stabilize it. And we're looking for it to just, just barely be rocking back and forth. That means it's got 15 pounds of pressure in it. And it just keeps letting off steam as it just gets a little bit over that. If it's knocking back and forth too loud, you've got too much heat on it. You need to turn the heat down just a little bit. All right, so there's 45 minutes. So we're just going to go ahead and turn the stove completely off. I'll let it come down to, to pressure on its own. Um, if I was in a hurry, I'd take the rocker off. Just remove that and it'll steam off a lot quicker. Um, I'm not in a hurry, so I'm just going to let it steam off slowly so it's not uh, making a bunch of noise while it steams off. Okay, so once the agar is, uh, comes out of the pot, we we're going to wait for it to get down to about 120 degrees, and that's when it's going to be okay to pour it into the, uh, into the petri dishes. So we're gonna, uh, we'll keep an eye on this. You're gonna need to get a, uh, a thermometer gun, something you can, you can kind of check the heat with. Um, not really a good idea to try to use your hands to try to feel this out. You wanna be able to check that temperature and make sure it's around 120. It gets, I mean, obviously it's boiling in there now. Um, and it takes, it takes a while for it to cool off, but if you let it get too cool, 
it'll uh, it'll actually start to congeal and it'll start to harden inside and then you won't be able to get all of your pour out of it. All right, we're gonna continue with uh, cooling down the agar. So I brought the pot down. What I wanna do here, now I've already sterilized this, this uh, surface before we started, before I started the video here. So I've got everything sterilized. I've got a, uh, a thick rubber glove on. It's got some of that plastic, uh, uh, that rubber coating. What I like to do before I handle the agar is I'll put another rubber glove on because you see those little contours that are in there. It's really difficult to, uh, to really keep that clean with the alcohol and stuff. So I just put another glove on over top of this before I handle the agar. Take the top off. Again, we're in the clean workspace or in the clean the clean flow of the work hood, so, or the excuse me of the flow hood. Um, so I can take this this top off without any contaminants getting in. So take this out. Put that there. Move this pan back. Okay, now that we've got our agar out, we're going to check the temperature. When it gets down to around 120, that's when we want to pour. You can see we're sitting about 177. So we're gonna let that keep coming down. In the meantime, I'm gonna start prepping the, uh, the Petri dishes and I'll show you how that process goes. Okay, now we're gonna, do, we're gonna get our Petri dishes ready for, uh, to, for the pour to happen, for the aggregate pour in them. So what we wanna do is we wanna keep this plastic. We want this plastic to, when I feel say the lids are, we wanna actually take this plastic, we wanna turn it upside down when we put this on here. Okay, so we'll turn it upside down and what I'm gonna do is uh, get a glove here. We're gonna spray this off real good, spray my hand. Take our scissors, we're gonna spray these off real good. What I'm gonna do, and I'm keeping this over my work surface, right? I'm gonna cut this bag. Now remember, I've got this upside down. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the bottom of the bag. So when I take this, I'm gonna flip it upside down and everything inside of this bag is sterilized. It comes sterilized from the company. So I, wanna, I don't wanna expose the, any of the, the Petri dishes to, any sterile, to anything that's not sterile. So no contamination gets, gets on these. So we're gonna cut this real careful. Okay, now we're gonna take this bag and I'm gonna turn this right side up and I don't wanna to touch any of these peachy dishes with my hands. Right side up. Take those just like that. Now when it's time for me to pour the agar, what I'll do is I'll take the agar and I'll throw that, take that off. And then I'll take each one of these dishes and I'll lift the bottom one up and I'll pour, put it down, second one up and up and up, keep going up. I'll show you how that process goes when we pour next. So we're probably gonna look for another 30, 40 minutes maybe for this to cool off. We'll check the temp one more time. I'm down to 168. So give a few more minutes and we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, check the agar one more time. We're set at 119 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to pour. Get in the hands of the alcohol again. We're gonna get this uh, this agar ready to give a little 
a little bit of a stir in here, so the stuff at the bottom, it kind of likes to settle at the bottom. We want to get that all throughout. We want to make sure the yeast and the uh, dry malt get all through there. So there's plenty of food all throughout the agar when we pour these plates. tight seal on there. Just gotta use your finger, gotta use your fingers and pry it up a little bit if you need to. We're gonna start our pour here. You're just looking to you don't want to get overfill the plate. Basically look for it to fill the bottom and then you can stop. Done with this agar, we're just, just going to throw the, the little bit that's left at the bottom there. We'll just throw that out. Um, we're going to let these plates sit here, and uh, you can kind of see. So I'm going to show this to you here. Kind of see how they're starting to steam up there at the top. If you don't want that steam at the top, just kind of let them sit here and cool off naturally. Let them go all the way down to temperature. They'll harden up. The steam will come off the top there. You'll be able to see through. Um, you won't have any issues like that. It's not really a big deal if the steam is in there. If you don't care, just go ahead and uh, you can wrap them up as soon as the, the liquid inside the agar solidifies. Right, the final step in the process is going to be to wrap the petri dishes with parafoam tape. It comes in a roll that looks like this. I'll take the pieces and I'll cut them in, it's like a two inch increment. And then I'll take that piece and I'll cut it in half again and I'll get two pieces out of, you know, out of one. Some people will take that piece and wrap it and you know, flip it over on itself and then wrap the thing. I just don't see any reason to. I've never had any problems with them. So I just use uh, half of the piece and make it stretch a little further. At this point, I don't use gloves for this. It's really difficult to get this stuff off the gloves. You're not doing anything to expose the agar to any, uh, to any contaminants as long as you don't take that lid off. So we're just gonna put a protective coat around it like that. And then I don't put any marks on these if they're fresh agar plates. I just leave them, I just wrap them up like that. And once they're done like that, you can store them anywhere. Um, I usually keep mine up there on top until I'm gonna inoculate some, uh, or inoculate agar with some spores or uh, something like that or check liquid culture. So I'll go through and wrap the rest of these. I won't uh, video it, you get the idea. 